Joining me now is Dalip Singh, Deputy National Security Advisor for International Economics. And uh, let me just go ahead and ask you that question that uh, Matt Bradley just brought up, the sense among people inside of Ukraine that these sanctions are good, um, but that they should have happened earlier. Walk us through why now and not before this invasion, as the president describes it, began. Yeah, well, good evening, Joyce. So the design of sanctions is to create leverage. Uh, and they create leverage by signaling that we're willing to impose severe costs uh, for any of Putin's actions that violate our core principles. Our core principles and those that we share uh, with our European allies and allies all across the world. If you impose those sanctions preemptively, it becomes a sunk cost and you remove your leverage for a peaceful diplomatic solution. So look, today uh, and yesterday, we and our allies and partners, we did take uh, actions that impose severe costs on Russia. You mentioned earlier, Joy, uh, we have effectively together shut down the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. This was Putin's prize for many, many years. He put $11 billion into this pipeline. Uh, billions of dollars that would have gone into his coffers will not flow. And this is a decisive break for Europe away from Russian energy and the beginning, we think, of a more accelerated diversification away from Russian energy. Uh, you know, we've also imposed full blocking sanctions. That means we freeze all the assets and prevent any transactions with two of large two of Russia's major financial institutions. And we've said we will not stop there if this invasion proceeds. Even the very largest Russian institutions, uh, we can, at the press of a button, impose these same measures upon them as well. We've also barred the entire Russian government uh, from financing itself from US investors or European investors. That's gonna raise Russia's borrowing costs. That's gonna reduce investment. That's gonna reduce Russia's productive capacity. And it's gonna deal Putin a very weak strategic blow. And that's what's within our control. We can't get into his head. We can't control his actions. We can just make this a terrible strategic choice. Uh, let me ask you, what would be the, uh, the, the, the trigger to imposing the sanctions that would cut Russia off from access to SWIFT? Because that is, you know, as you said, that's, that's ratcheting it up. What, what would be the trigger for that? Well, as a tactical matter, uh, we don't want to telegraph exactly which actions by Putin will result in uh, a particular response. And, and really, Joy, there are endless possibilities in terms of how this crisis could unfold. Uh, what we've said is no option, no option is off the table. Uh, for now, we feel like we've had other measures that are comparably severe that we can take in lockstep with our allies and partners and which don't have the same spillover effects as, as the SWIFT sanction. Do you, and are there other sanctions regimes that, that the administration is looking to dip into? There are obviously the Magnitsky Act global Magnitsky sanctions that in theory could be leave, you know, sort of be levied against uh, Russia and its leaders. Is the U.S. looking to that? Or is there, are there other measures that you think could stop him? Because if, as our reporters have said, Putin feels impervious to sanctions, isn't moved by them, doesn't care, then what? Well, there's no such thing as a sanctions-proof economy. And one major thrust that we can deploy uh, that we haven't thus far are what we call export controls. And export controls are kind of like financial sanctions. They both deny something to Russia that it desperately needs and can't replace from anywhere else. Export controls are focused on critical technology. So think about the foundational technologies of our time, semiconductors, AI, biotech, quantum, robotics. The West and our allies and open societies, that's where these technologies are designed and where they're produced. And if we deny these technologies to Russia, it'll do two things. Number one, it'll prevent Russia from diversifying its economy outside of oil and gas, which is more or less all it is right now. And it'll prevent Russia from modernizing its economy. Putin himself has said he has strategic ambitions in aerospace, defense, uh, IT. All of those industries depend on these foundational technologies. And we can deny them with our allies and partners across Europe and importantly Asia at a moment's notice. And I do want to ask you about Asia. You mentioned Asia. Are, is there confidence in the administration that China will not provide a, a backdoor and a way out for Putin by giving him, sort of reinforcing economically what is taken away by Europe and by, by the United States? Yes, uh, we're confident in that assessment. If Russia wants to sequester itself from Western technology, from Western capital markets, and from the Western economies, that's a, that's a terrible strategic mistake. Just think of the G7, the major democratic economies of the world. That's more than 50% of the total. China's 15%. If you think about the financial system, the dollar, the euro, the pound, the yen, these are the dominant reserve currencies. This is how 
people make and receive payments. It's how they store their wealth. It's how they borrow money. The renminbi as a percentage uh, of the total on those metrics, it's in the low single digits. And finally, on technology, let me give you a data point. China imports 300 billion semiconductors each year. It produces almost none of the leading edge chips that are needed for Putin to realize his ambitions. So China is not a substitute for the West.